Good morning. Welcome to Stratford Heights Church. We're so glad to see you this morning, be in God's house. We just came from the nine o'clock service where God moved and, the, and, and his presence was evident here. And we heard a beautiful message from pastor about the power of God's love working in our lives, amen. And we're so glad whether you're joining us live stream or in person, we appreciate you choosing to worship with us this Sunday, amen. God is good. If you're a guest of Stratford Heights today, if you could text 97000 and let us know or fill out the connection card that's in, in your pew and drop it in the offering plate. We would love to try to connect with you. And uh, we're just so thankful you're here this morning with us. Why don't you turn to your neighbor and just greet them and welcome them to God's house this morning. as we celebrate those that God has placed in our lives. I know each one of us have people in our lives that are just special to us and God has put those people on our path to love. I want us to turn our focus today to the source of all love, amen. The Bible says we love because God first loved us, amen. And over in 1 John 4, 8 and 9, the verse says, he who does not love does not know God, but God is love. And this love of God was manifested toward us, that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. I'm thankful for his son, amen. The gift of love that changes our lives. You know, when we encounter God's love, when we give our hearts to him, he changes us. And his love, it tears down walls in our lives. It causes us to treat others differently, amen, and, and see the good in them. It just, it changes our circumstances and it rescues us. And I'm, I'm thankful for God and what he's doing in our life. Can you stand with us this morning? We're getting ready to go into worship and we're gonna just agree together in prayer and, and ask God to have his way in this service, amen, and, and to touch lives and hearts. Father, we thank you, Lord, for meeting us here once again. God, we thank you for all you continue to do in our lives. Your presence is evident here today, God, and we know that you're gonna touch people God, we ask that you just let your anointing fall on those that speak and that sing your praises, God. And we ask that you break off any strongholds. God, and we lift you up today, God, and we know you're good, God, and you're faithful. And we ask that if anybody doesn't know you today, God, that you would turn their hearts toward you, God. And we thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do. And we give you all the praise and the glory, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you this morning. Let's worship the Lord. Get my praise. God's gonna get my praise. 
my back, I ain't afraid. He's a fire running wild and he's never been caged. This is the lion that cannot be. Hey! Oh, I think you need to say that one more time. I'm not gonna run away My God's got my back I ain't afraid He's the fire running wild And he's never been caged Jesus is the lion That cannot be Hey He goes before me. He goes before. 
give him praise right now. I praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Woo. You know what to do when you get caught in a circumstance and can't call the pastor, it'd be okay if you could, but you just can't. And you can't even pray for yourself. I don't know if you've ever been there. This song come out of an experience like that. I just really didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to ask for. And he said, just don't talk. He said, praise me. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Sing it with me. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Temple for you, Lord, is what I long to be. A dwelling place so you can come and live inside of me. You'll never be contained inside these walls of play. <laughs> We're going to take you out into the world so they can hear me say,
mighty God, I love you. I glorify your name. I praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I've never been the same. presence in this house you are our bright and morning star the light of the world prince of peace you're the everlasting father we bless you in your presence today and we're so thankful Lord for the abiding presence of God you're here with us we sense you we feel you but the truth is that your word declares that if we, two or three, have gathered together in your name, there you are in our midst. We thank you for your word is true. Would you just write where you are, just in your own way, would you just either lift up your hands or your heart, your voice, however you want to do that, would you just make connection and give him praise? Lord, we honor you. We lift up your name and praise you this morning. We worship and lift up your name because you're worthy. How excellent is your name, O oh Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, amen. As we go before the Lord in prayer today, it feels so good in this house, doesn't it? Amen. We have a class of 20 that's meeting back in the, uh, the Strat Track class today. If you're interested in signing up for the next go round, uh, you can do that online or you can just speak to a staff member. If you're new at our church, if you've been here within the last year uh, since the pandemic, we haven't had the, the Strat Track classes, so we would love to have you there uh, next go around. I, this group back here, they talked me into telling them my middle name. This is a wild bunch back here. But we're excited for the class and encourage you to, to stop by. And if you're a, a Stratford member and you've been here for a long time, encourage you to sign up and go through the class because it talks a whole lot about our history and what we believe in the Church of God and then how you can be involved in, in ministry here. So it's a good, good class to sign up for. We're going to go before the Lord in prayer, but first I'm going to say hello to Japan. I want you all to help me. Uh, Kayla, Jackie, and Frederick are watching from Tokyo, Japan. Yes. <clears throat> I told them I would shout out and say hi to them. I told them the other night, I was talking to them on FaceTime, and I said, oh, I know Japanese. 
I said, Honda, Kawasaki, Mitsubishi. Yeah, they did the same thing. <laughs> I do know Sayonara. And it was Lenny Robinson who stopped by my office on the way in, uh, on the way after the second service, and he said, I know the southern, uh, I know how to speak southern Japanese. I said, how do you do that? He said, Sayonara, y'all. <laughs> so, all right, we're going to say hi to them, but we're also praying. Uh, for Brother Beetle Bailey, he texted me, said that he is in need of prayer this morning. So let's, let's remember our brother. He's on the road traveling and needs our prayers today. Also, Sister Judy Trent. Judy lost her sister, Bonnie, that we've been praying for. And uh, her husband, Porter, uh, is very ill and, and needs prayer. So she's not with us today, but I know she's watching online. She needs to know her church is praying for her and for her precious sister, her and Bonnie and her sister Sue, they were just like the three musketeers. They're very, very close. And uh, I know it's breaking her heart. So let's keep Judy in prayer today. She has worked for six pastors of this church, 50 years this year. Isn't that crazy? We love her and we're going to pray for you. Judy Porter, we love you and we're praying for you. How many of you would say, I have a need my life and I want God to minister. Amen. Amen. All over the house. Well, let's go before him in prayer, knowing that he is able. Father, we come to you this morning. We thank you that by your stripes we're healed. That, Lord, by your power we're made whole. We thank you that it's by faith, Lord, that we can see anything happen in our lives. I pray that you would touch and minister to those that are here today, the hands that have went up that your work would be accomplished and done, that, Lord, you would bring glory to your name in every situation. We call upon you and know that our hope, our trust, our dependence is upon you. And we thank you. Where else would we go? We honor your word and we thank you for your power that's at work in our lives. Be with your people. Touch them. Lord, we're praying for Beetle. We lift him up to you, David Bailey. God, just touch him by your spirit. Let your work be accomplished in his life. Bring healing. Bring strength and bring grace into his heart. I pray this and ask it in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we ask you to comfort and strengthen Judy. Lord, would you be with her and would you be with her family? Touch Porter, minister to him, bring healing and strength to him physically. We just ask this today in the name of Jesus. Our dear friend, touch Porter. May your comforting hand, the Holy Spirit, the rock of ages, touch and minister to Judy and her family as they go through the next few difficult days. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. And everyone together said amen. 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 How many of you believe revival's on the way? I believe revival is on the way. I believe that we're in the steps of revival. I don't want to say revival is tomorrow. I believe it's right now, that we're in revival. I believe the power of God is here to do a mighty work. Now listen, I know that, that sometimes when you're in a spirit-filled church, things, you know, get a little bit like, whoa, you know, what are them people doing? You know, I want to just encourage you, when you feel and you know the Spirit of God, when you sense and feel that settled peace inside your heart, everything's going to be all right. And what you're seeing is just worship. I go to ball games and I see a lot more excitement than I see here sometimes. So if a leather football can get that kind of screaming, hollering, and painting my face, then surely I can worship God with a little bit of energy. So I'm liable to cut a rug. I'm, I'm liable to dance. The Bible says David danced before the Lord with all his might. Dancing's okay in the church. So is your worship and your praise. And when we clap, you know, I don't even know why I'm doing this today, but when we clap, the Bible says, clap your hands unto the Lord. It says, shout unto the voice with a voice of triumph. We're supposed to be like shouting and praising and clapping. Amen. So all I got to say is this. You ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> praise God. We want to give you the opportunity to give and so we're going to ask you if you will as the choir comes back around to, to sing another worship song 
um, want to remind you that this is the last week for us. Next week, uh, it's all over for Little Miss and Little Master. And what this program is, just in case you don't know, is it isn't that we really pick the best baby, but we just pick the one that raises the most money for the Bright Beginnings Nursery Program here at the church. They don't ask you throughout the year or ask me for great amounts in their budget. But every year they say, can we please do the Little Miss and Little Master? And they do that. And so all the jars are out in the lobby. They're there for you to drop 10,000 in each glass. And so as you do that, um, God will bless you and the babies will buy all new TVs. <laughs> I'm kidding. You know, they'll get some much needed equipment and things that they're looking to do. If you can make an investment in our babies program, please do that today. Today is the last day, so you're able to go by there. With that said, Father, we ask your blessings over our gifts, our offerings, our tithe. We thank you, Lord, for missionaries on the field that we help to support. We ask you to use us today, not just to give, but to meet needs for the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. And a path in the mighty waters, which bringeth forth the chariot and horse, the army and the power, they shall lie down together. How many of you know all your enemies will be destroyed? They shall not rise, they are extinct, they are quenched as toes. The, how many of you know the ultimate enemy is that slew foot the devil himself? Every trap that he's ever tried to put you in, every discouragement, every, there's some in here today, you have been depressed, you have felt isolated and alone, and it's going down today. You're leaving here free in the Spirit of God. It says, I'm the Lord. I've done all those things in the old days. How many have ever seen the hand of God work in your life? You've got miracles. You've got answered prayers. He says, don't remember those things. He says, don't even think about it. Don't even look back right now. He says, because I will do a new thing. No, you are not hearing me. Hallelujah. I will do a right now thing. I'll do a right now thing. How many of you believe we need a right now miracle? We need a right now touch of God. We need a right now move of the Holy Ghost. That's what we need. Glory to God. I'll do a new thing. Now. Say now. now. Say it again. Now. It shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. <laughs> Is anything too hard for God? No. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Go ahead. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Come on. Even, Even when, when I don't feel it, you're, you're working. working. You never stop. Let you the Lord never touch stop this morning. working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. 
you feel him? We don't go by feelings. We go by the word. But I like it when I can feel him anyhow. I feel the presence of the Lord in this house this morning. It's in an atmosphere like we're in right now. I'm telling you, you can be healed in your body physically. Somebody can get saved that needs to get saved. And you say, well, in an atmosphere like this, surely they're ready to get saved. I'm talking about the one laying at home in the bed that needs to get right with God. How many got an unsaved loved one? Look at this. We could pack the house twice. Right now, lift up the other hand and call their names out before the Lord while the presence of the Lord is moving in this house. Lord, we call on our unsaved loved ones right now. Do a new thing in their life. Do a new work, Lord. Make a way where there is no way in their lives. Touch their lives, their hearts, their souls to be ready for you. We pray over them, Holy Ghost, do a work. Set them free from the entanglements, from the addictions, from those things that hinder them and are obstacles in their path. God, redeem them by the power of your Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. You know, every time, every time the Congress gets together and they they do a vote, they think they get work done. I just felt in my heart that we have just accomplished much in the atmosphere for the kingdom of God. Wow. Wow. Hallelujah. Oh, Oh, praise God. Amen. Why you might, you might reach back and touch that very thing that needs healed in your own body right now. And you might be surprised. You might get out of here, get in the car and start doing stuff you didn't think you could do. I believe in the power of God to heal and to deliver and to touch his people. Here's what I'm going to tell you. There are going to be testimonies out of this service this morning. Amen. How many agree with me? It's going to be stories, testimonies out of this service this morning. Be healed. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm going to try to preach. Happy Love Day. Turn to somebody and say, love, love, love. Love, love, love. If it's your girlfriend or your fiance, turn to them and wink at them, smile at them. Happy Love Day. Somebody said, why do you call it that? Because, you know, I, somebody told me not too long ago, they said, you know, Valentine's Day was really a pagan holiday. And I said, okay, well, I'll just call it Love Day, and we'll still love people, and we'll still celebrate love. Because how many of you know the devil's not allowed to have the Love Day? He's not allowed to have love. Love comes from God. I'm, I got to preach on me this morning, so you're in trouble. Let's get into it. Let's get started. Love is the medicine for the sickness of the world. Remember, when you say amen a lot, I end early. You don't say amen a lot, I think you don't get it, so I keep preaching. (laughs) It's called manipulation. (laughs) No. Love cures. Love cures. It fixes, it heals, it restores. Love is powerful. Love cures those who give it and those who receive it. Love is a powerful force. Love is what grows the church. Love is what the church is made of. It's been said that the three most powerful words in all languages, three most powerful words, can you guess what they are? I love love you and I love you too we're going to read scripture in 1 Corinthians 13 the love chapter of the Bible so if you've got your Bibles turn there otherwise they'll have it on the screen for you but I want to begin by sharing something I've shared before probably about half of you know it it's been 11 years ago now that my mother passed away and I remember when she had to go into brain surgery this would be the last time that we would be able to communicate with her and she was 
sitting there and they were getting her ready, prepping her for surgery. She had to have a brain bleed taken care of. And so we were sitting there with her and they came in and they were getting ready to take her and I looked at, at her on, on the way out and I said, well, mama, I said, I love you. And I reached into her, I blew a kiss at her and she kissed into the air. She looked up at me and she said, oh baby, I know you do. And that was the last words my mom ever spoke to me in this life. I look at the powerful words, the power of love. In that moment, one of the greatest things that I ever took away from my relationship with my mom was that on her last words to me, she said, oh, I know you do, baby. She knew I loved her. Your loved ones, do they know that you love them? Do they know how you feel? I always tell people, I'm going to do my best to tell you how I feel about you so that the devil doesn't tell you how I feel because he lies. We need to communicate more to one another. So we're going to talk about love. I know in our society, in our culture, we confuse love a lot of times with sex, money, gifts, greed, lust, with all the ways that love is used and abused in this world. What we need, what we still need, is the power of real, authentic, God-sent love. We need to know that power in our lives. The world, it's an old song, but what the world needs now is love, sweet love. We need love lived out. We need to hear it, see it, feel it, experience it. And above all, we need to know how to pass it on to someone else. 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 1, then I'll let you be seated. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries, and I have all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Love suffers long. It's kind. Love doesn't envy. It doesn't parade itself. It's not puffed up. It doesn't behave rudely. It does not seek its own. It's not easily provoked. It thinks no evil. It doesn't rejoice in iniquity but rejoices in truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. And verse 8, my favorite, says, love never fails. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Oh, listen to this today. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know, just as I am also known. And now abides faith, hope, and love these three, but the greatest of these is love. The New Living Translation says it like this, three things that will last forever, faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. Father, we ask you to touch us this morning with the words of God we want to move out of the way and want your work to be accomplished and done in every life and in every heart. Minister to us and speak to us by your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Paul wrote this chapter of love that we're hearing and you're, you're hearing and, and we're reading. 
the missionary, the evangelist, the pastor at heart. Paul, Paul believed that the greatest element, the greatest thing in the whole world for any Christian, for any church, anywhere, the, the greatest thing that we could ever do is learn to love one another. His words ring loudly in our souls this morning. Love one another, all throughout scripture. Love one another. Goes on to say, if you love, you know God. If you don't love, you don't know God. I didn't say that, the Bible did. If you love, you know God. If you don't love, you don't know God. It's the glue that holds us all together. It's the greatest ingredient of heaven's banquet hall. A church that doesn't have love is like playing baseball without a ball or a glove. It's like banana pudding without grandma. A laptop without Wi-Fi. To be a church, to call yourself a church or, or to call yourself a Christian and you don't have love working in your life, it's like chocolate chip cookies without the chocolate chips. To have church without love is really not a church at all. It's not a church at all. Church is not an organization. It's not a denomination. It's not a group. It's not a, a formalized meeting. It's not even a gathering. It's a body of Christ coming together for the purposes of the kingdom of God. One member connected to the other member, the body of Christ. Love is the essence of who we are. To not have love in this church is like Bible study and we don't use the Bible. Love is an essential ingredient. It's what happens in your life when you come to know Christ. It's, it's kind of like a measure. As a matter of fact, the Bible is really clear to, to point out to us that the fullness of Christ in us comes out through our love. Young people, listen. Love. Mom, dad, listen. Grumpy husband, listen. Love equals the measure of Christ in your life. This is going to be tough. Everybody I better hang on. Put your seatbelt on. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 19. To know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, which is more than you can know, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. I think many times as pastor, it's my responsibility to pray over the vision of our church, who we are in our community, and while all of our pastors do this and all of our people do this, it is a responsibility, I think, of mine to be praying about the vision of our church. And I envision that when anyone in this whole area, this community around us, whenever they are, are looking for love, real love, authentic love, when they're looking for the love of God, to know the love of God, my heart is that they would, somebody would look at them and say, have you been to the place up on the hill over there? Have you been to Stratford Heights Church? Oh, you're going to see love there. You're going to know love there. You're going to see it in action. That's my heart's cry. What would happen to our community if just this place alone was the place of love? If this was a place where people are loved unconditionally, they're loved no matter what. I've said it since the very first day I ever became pastor, leaving youth ministry and coming up here to the front. I've said it over and over and over again. This needs to be a place where all people are loved, accepted, forgiven, and welcomed. This ought to be a place where anyone, no matter where they come from, no matter what their background, no matter what kind of sin they've been involved in, no matter what part of society, they are welcome here because this is the place of love. God's love. The powerful love powerful love of God. People are searching, they're looking, they're watching, they're watching you. They're watching your every move. You don't even know that they are. The enemy 
especially likes to push them to watch you on stressful days, to watch you during crisis. Don't you think the enemy knows how to do his job? I'm amazed at the people that still have not figured it out. The enemy will even put a good old fashioned hypocrite on a pew right next to you if he can get you to go sour on God's church. We gotta be smarter. We gotta be more intelligent. Man, I'm not going back to that church anymore. They, they, they hurt me. That one lady who was, she, she, she was mean. She probably was sent from hell itself. The enemy probably anointed her to find this church and sit on a pew. And when she walked in, the devil said, go over there, third pew, <laughs> right next to her. We got to be smarter. We got to understand the enemy is after us to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He's out to offend. He's out to wound. He's out to attack. He is determined that he will win something before it's all over. He hopes that it's you. But people are searching. People are full of desire. They're curious to set it before there's a hole inside every man and woman. God puts it there. There's a hole that can only be filled by the love of God. It can only be filled by the power of Almighty God. But the world, they're searching. I mean, oh my goodness, they're looking for medicines, for doctors, for lotions, for procedures. They're looking to do anything they can to preserve their youth. It's not working. It wasn't it Juan Ponce de Leon who was looking for the fountain of youth. He was absolutely convinced that it was in Florida. Some of you think it's in Florida too, and you go every year. Infomercials tell us what we can do to change our circumstances, to take this pill, buy this Nordic track, do this, take this, all for the attempts of trying to regain something we feel like we're losing. Cindy Crawford has a lotion out that if you buy it and you watch an hour-long infomercial where they have an audience going, oh, 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 I used it. Look at my face. Yeah, you look old. <laughs> Yeah, you, you buy her lotion, it makes you look 25 again. <laughs> Only in your eyes. <laughs> it doesn't work. We're all searching. We're all looking. We buy those tickets for that terrible thing that no one's allowed to do. We buy from scratch. We invest. We do all these things to Try to search for something we're looking, looking, telling you what we're looking for is love. Inside, the powerful love of God is everything you need. It's wisdom, it's grace, it's, it's success, it's strength, even love. We search for riches, fame, youth, friends, and health, and yes, even love. And as the old country song says, we're looking for love in all the wrong places. But what would happen, what would happen if this could be a place of love? If this could be the place of acceptance? If this could be the place that most reflects heaven? If this could be the place where it was, it's clear that you come here you're going to be accepted, you're going to be loved, you're going to be welcomed, you're going to be forgiven. This is not, unfortunately, this is not some, some out here dream. This is the reality of what we should be. This is who we are. I'm praying this morning for a revival of love, for a revival of forgiveness. You need to forgive one another. You need to forgive family and friends. You need to forgive those that have offended you. What will cover a multitude of sins? Love. Love them. How do you win them? Love them. 
I've done everything in my power throughout my life to try to, if someone is, is angry at me or upset at me or if I've gotten a little scuttle with somebody like way back in junior high. I've always found that when, when you just look at them and, and you come at them with love, the real ones, you can't refuse. Because love always, love is always the answer. Faith is a treasure. I mean, we need faith. We need to believe. We believe that he is and is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Faith pleases God. We know faith is valuable. It's, it's important. And we try to build our faith and we study faith and we should because we need faith now. But there's a reason why the scripture says faith now abides faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. The greatest of these is love. I'll say it one more time. The greatest of these is love. The reason love is the greatest, it's, it's mind-blowing. It's because you, faith is, is something that, that has no purpose in heaven. Faith is something we need now. Ron Medley used to sing the song. He would sing Beulah Land. And he'd say, I'm longing for you. Beulah land. And then it goes on and he says, where my faith becomes sight, my faith will end in sight. Faith has no eternal purpose in heaven. Hope. Hope is a treasure. Hope is a value. Hope is important. We need the great hope of Christ in our lives. We sing it, hope has a name. His name is Jesus. We must have hope. We need, now abides faith and hope. But hope has no purpose in heaven because hope is there. I can hug hope. I can talk to hope. I can fellowship with hope. Hope is Jesus. So when I get to glory, when I get there, I'll be laying down faith. I won't be walking around streets of gold saying, I'm walking on these streets by faith. Well, I'm going to go over here to the throne by faith. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to touch it and feel it and smell it. I'm going to hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I'm going to see the angels of God. I'm going to see the river of life. I'm going to know what gold feels like underneath my feet. I can't hardly wait until I stand there in the presence of the Lord. What will we do? I can only imagine. Don't need that. But what is eternal? The greatest of these is love. You know why? Because God is. Say it again. God is. Dear friends, let us continue to love one another. For love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God. But anyone who does not love God does not know God. For God is love. We need a revival. We need a bath in love. We need to have a clear understanding. He's got to strip away the, the, the evil that, that tries to weigh us down and tries to put a blanket over top of our Christian faith and our, our, our obvious love for God. We've got to get to the place where we seek a revival, a fresh new revival of love for God and love for one another. We know what Jesus said. He says, now I'm going to give you a new commandment. Love each other just as you have you have loved you just as I have loved you. You should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. He said, this is my commandment. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. There is no greater love than this that a man or a woman would lay down their life for their friends. What are the two greatest commandments? Love God. Love people. Don't underestimate. You, you're not allowed to hide it under a bushel. The kids knew it well. We're not allowed to hide it. We're not allowed to snuff it out. We're to be salt and light everywhere we go. We are to express now more than ever. Now more than ever. There's hate. 
There's violence, there's anger, there's bitterness, there's unforgiveness. It's everywhere. It's in your family, it's in the church, it's in the world. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. And an understanding that God's love is the power of the universe. His love is so rich, so beautiful. It changes everything. The love of God is unconditional. It's one of my favorite descriptions of his love. It's unconditional. Sometimes we think, you know, we've studied and we know so much and we understand the mysteries and we understand the gifts. We know it all. We got all this knowledge. Sometimes we look down our nose at people that aren't where we are. People don't know what we know. People aren't as holy as we are. They've not come down the, the road long enough. They've still got some growing to do. He says, though I know all mystery, though I have all knowledge, though I prophesy and I have all the gifts, if I have not love, I am nothing. Love is the most important aspect of your walk with God. It's the identifier. It's the measure. It shows us who you are. Oh, no, I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. <laughs> yeah, when you give them a piece of your mind, you give them a piece of your heart. You give them a piece of your heart. Love, love that embraces people of all walks, all nations, all tribes, all people, all languages. It's love. It's so valuable and so important. My prayer this morning is that we get baptized with love all over again, that we love one another. I ask you, forgive me if I've done anything, if I've and all of my walking around, if I walked past you and, and didn't speak, I promise it went on purpose. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Forgive me for anything and everything I've ever done. And if we carry that and we turn this place into a house of love, then people are going to be flocking in here. As we lift him up, all men are drawn unto him. And he is love. God loves us so much. And when we finally get it in our heads... That the one who, who robbed the liquor store last night, who's been sleeping out with everything under the sun besides his wife, that guy sleeping in the car because his wife kicked him out, one of these kids won't speak to him because he's so rotten and dirty mean. When you and I fully understand that God loves him just as much as he loves you. Unconditional love. That blows our minds. Surely God loves me. I'm good. He does love you just as much as them. A terrorist born in Afghanistan, living in a cave, concocting ideas on how to blow up churches. God looks down and loves him. God has a plan to reach him. I saw a news clip the other day. It was so awesome about this young lady who is trying her best to, to navigate through the fact that she's been disowned, and disqualified by all of her family, because as a Muslim, she's found Jesus. And you could see it in her eyes. You could hear it in her voice. It was the most beautiful thing. It let me know. I was watching her closely, and I was looking into her face, seeing the tears as she talked about her conversion and I was thinking, you can see him in her. You can see it. It was beautiful. God has a plan to reach everyone. How dare us put anybody in a box that says, no way. How dare us judge others. How dare us contribute to the enemy's plan to destroy people by our mouths. Oh, I'm really, I'm, I'm rich. Open that door. I'll be right there. 
I'll run out. Sometimes we, we're used of the enemy and we don't even know it. We tear people down. We destroy people with our mouths and we don't know. You'd, maybe they did do something wrong. But maybe last night while you were telling their story all over town, they were on their face repenting to God. Ask David if God can change and your, his love can change you. Ask so many in the word of God if his power can change you. God's love, there's nothing equal to it. It's the breath of heaven. God is love. He wants all of us, every one of us, to understand the great power of his love in our lives. To realize that we're nothing without it and we must have this love in order to be who we say we want to be. Love is greater than the words I speak. It's greater than the spiritual gifts in my life. It's greater than the personal sacrifices that I make. He says, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but I have not love, I'm a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. Though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so I could move a mountain, but I don't have love, I'm nothing. I don't have love, I'm nothing. I remember as a young man, I was getting established and I was about 20 years old. I hadn't yet been called into ministry, but God was working in me. And I remember I walked in my bedroom one night and I was staying with my parents. I was home and I was, I was trying to just navigate through this newfound relationship that I had with God. And somebody had asked me earlier in the day, you know what, do you love God? How do you know you love God? And I'm like, I love God. Duh. And I got home and I thought, do I? Do I love God? I mean, I say I do. I, I've had that experience. I prayed the prayer. Do I love God? And I got disturbed. I went in my room. I turned on some praise music. And, and I opened up the windows and I was praying. And I, I looked up to heaven and I said, God, I want to know that when I say I love you, I mean it and you know it. I want to know what it is to love you. I want to love you. And all of a sudden, Sister Diana, while the worship was going, and I felt the presence of God fill my room at 20 years old, and I remember looking out and I just saw like a vision. It was in my heart. I saw this torrential rainstorm, lightning, thunder, and wind. And in the middle of all that, those dark clouds, I saw something small. And in my first thoughts, I remember thinking, oh, that's Jesus walking on the water. That's cool. Are you showing me that you love me enough to walk across the water? And as it got closer and closer and closer, it got so close that I could see all of the attributes. And it was a cross. Crucifixion. And I saw the face of Jesus. And blood dripping down that cross on the wood. And in the storm, I could distinguish the blood from the rain. And I looked into that picture. And in the vision that the Lord was giving me, he turned to me and he said, I got you. And I sat there staring into this picture in my head. And I said, I love you. And he said, I love you too. And I said, that's love. That's love. And man, I hit the floor. My face went in the carpet and I stayed there. I don't even know how long. I wept and I cried. I said, God, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. I know now that I love you. You did that for me. He showed me that, that the torrential storm, he, he said, this is you. This is your, this is what I'm up here for. This is what I'm doing. 
This, all this is you, it's your, your life, it's all the wrong choices, it's sin, it's all the darkness in your life, it's all a torrential rainstorm around this cross, but I got you, I got you. In that moment, I knew that I loved him. I knew that I loved him because of what he's done for me. The kids knew it best when they said, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. We love him because he first loved us. And when we get a picture of his love for us, it changes everything. It changes everything. I love him this morning. I want this to be a place of love. I want this to be the place of love. It doesn't have to be the only place. I, think, I, I pray for all churches to come into a beautiful knowledge. You know, I went to a funeral last week at a very nominal church uh not like ours at all very very liturgical and very formal and you know what i felt god there i I, i'm not saying i'm judging their theology their teaching and not saying any of that but i am saying that when we sang a very familiar hymn i felt god there How many of you know God wants to be known wherever people are searching? We know that salvation and the message of Jesus and the gospel and the cross, the shadow of the cross is the only way to be saved. We know Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. That we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. and We need a savior because the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. That comes the eternal language, love. Stand with me this morning. The love of God, how rich, how pure, how measureless and strong. It shall forever more endure. The saints and angels' song. The love of God, how rich and pure, how measureless and strong. It shall forevermore endure. The saints and angels' jail song and it's higher than the highest heaven and it's deeper than the deepest sea his love is wider than I can ever imagine your great love for me. Your great love for me. Father, we come to you this morning. It's our passion, it's our desire that this be a place of love. The Lord, we experience and encounter love on a daily and weekly basis in this church in such a way that it draws people to you. May we not be hindrances or obstacles because of our, our physicalness, the, the flesh that fights with us, that causes us, Lord, to live in bad attitude and offense. Help us, Jesus. Help us to live under the banner of mercy the love of grace and the power of forgiveness. Help us to forgive one another, to love one another, to serve one another. Help us to be a reflection this morning of all that you have given to us. The precedence has already been laid. You loved us before we ever loved you. Bathe us in your love. 
search out our hearts. Don't let us get crabby and mean, grumpy, impatient. Let us remember that love is kind. It's not easily provoked. Keeps no records of wrong. Help us to remember love. Love believes in the good. Searches out the good and hopes all things. Love never fails. I pray over our church. I pray over our families, over every marriage. On this love day, Lord, let there be forgiveness. Let there be mercy. Let there be grace. I praise you and I thank you for it in Christ's name. With every head bowed and every eye closed, I wouldn't, I wouldn't dismiss this service or come into a time of prayer if we let you walk out of here and you have not yet accepted Christ into your life, I want to give you an opportunity to pray with us. I've said it many times and it's supposed to be said. It's not the words or the prayer that gets you in or gets you saved, gets your name written down. It's about what comes from your heart, your belief in Christ. If you believe that he's the son of God, he died on the cross for you. If you believe the gospel, if you believe he's the way, the truth and the life, and you're ready to confess him, then that's when the prayer changes your life. We're going to pray right now, and as we do, is there anyone in here today that will pray with me and say, this, that's me, I want to get saved. Are you here? Just slip up your hand and write back down, and we're going to pray for you. God bless you. Is there anyone else? God bless you, sir. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Anyone else at all? I want to pray that prayer today. All right, if you're watching online, no doubt you're ready to pray. And if you are, there's going to be a a number on the screen. Text to that number and just put in the body of your text, set free. Someone's going to be in contact with you. We're going to help you establish your new walk with Jesus. We want to help you be stronger and know what how to get into the Bible and how to pray. We want to do what we can to help disciple you. But for those of us that are here, let's all pray this very important prayer together from our hearts. Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. I accept you as my Savior. You are the Son of God. You died on the cross. You rose from the dead. You walked out of the tomb. Now walk into my heart. Be Lord of my life. I confess you today. And I believe you. So according to your word, I'm saved, born again, child of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry from the waters, lifted me. Now safe am I, love lifted me. Amen? I pray for you today. I want to pray a pastor's prayer. I want us to, would you just, if you're able to, I know it's, it's that time. If you're socially distanced with your people, would you just reach over and take them by the hand and just for a moment in prayer. Husbands, you pray for your wife. Wife, you pray for your husband. Pray right now over them that God's blessing, his strength, his healing, his health be over their lives. God, I pray for every man, woman, boy, and girl in this house. Lay your hand on them and touch them today, Lord, to know you in this love, the width, the height, the depth, and the length. Let them to know to be rooted and grounded in your love, God. We just pray this in Jesus' name. We pray for the power of the Holy Spirit to guide us and direct us no matter where we go from this place. Lord, through the next week, may we find ourselves looking for people to show love, looking for people to show mercy, looking for those that we can show kindness to. Lord, change our hearts, change our lives. Make this a place of love, place of transformation, place of healing, God, deliverance 
in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Guide us into a revival such as we've never seen before. Touch us, Lord, to live out the promises of your word as we approach these last days with caution and care that we are the body of Christ. We ask this today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now, pray blessing over every husband, every wife, every child, every son and daughter. Lay your hand on them, every grandchild, every grandma, grandpa, aunt and uncle. Touch them by your spirit today. Empower them by your grace and let them know and sense your presence most of all. As they leave this place, may we be changed. May we be more in love and encountering your love than we ever have before. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. God bless you all. I want to remind you again about the Little Master, Little Miss uh, program that's happening there in the lobby, our little uh, fundraiser. We want to bless our nursery department, Bright Beginnings. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy the snow over the next few days, and uh, have a great week.